everyone. My name is Jody Norstead, and what a wild summer it's been as the battle against COVID-19 continues. But the hope is that we have some normalcy this fall with the return of high school sports. You'll see plenty of changes this season from sanitizing footballs to no handshakes, attendance will be limited, and much more. Now, a lot of the guidelines can be found on the NDHSAA website. But anyway, we have a big night planned. Jandy is on deck to talk South Dakota high school football at 7.30. And we'll dive into the prep volleyball season at 8, but we lead things off with North Dakota High School football. Let's start in Class 3A, where the start of the season will look different, with EDC and WDA teams not playing each other in the regular season as they try to limit travel during the pandemic. So we won't get our taste of cross-state matchups until the postseason. Plus, both conferences have some buys built in to the regular season. Now, last year, it didn't matter which side of the state Bismarck Century was playing. The Patriots ran the table, culminating with a 10-0 win over Cheyenne at the Dakota Bowl. Here's a preview of the defending state champs in 3A. The taste of perfection was sweet last year for Bismarck Century. But after nine months, senior lineman Andrew Langang says the flavor has faded. You know what, that win was awesome. I know we worked really hard last season and to end out on top is awesome, but at the same time, we stayed hungry throughout the summer. Langang knows a thing or two about hunger. He spent the summer dishing up pizzas at a local restaurant. When the 6'5", 275 pound lineman wasn't at work, he was working out. 6 a.m. lifts, daily shot and disc throwing, and football drills were the norm for this coveted prospect that holds offers from several Power 5 programs. You look at, at his skill set in terms of his, his size, you know, he's uh, 6'5 and a half, 276 right now, and uh, I think he can carry a lot more weight, and it's those type of things that uh, those recruiters and offensive line coaches are looking for. I am not content where I'm at. I always want to get better, and I just look forward to getting the opportunity this season to show kind of what I can, what, what I can give. 6'5'' senior Noah Schaffner now has the keys to the offense after learning the ropes from last year's 3A player of the year, Cade Feeney. On call, ready? ready? I like to throw in the pocket a little more. Uh, I could also do bootlegs. I like to run. I could run through people, maybe around sometimes. We'll see. Cade was perhaps more of a runner and, and, and Noah, you know, he's 6'5'', he's 210 and and we've got to use uh, those skills, the height and, and his uh, running ability. Uh, obviously, uh, he's waited a long time for this, and, and rightfully so. And, and uh, we're going to give him every uh, opportunity to be successful. Schaffner will be surrounded by experience with four of five starting offensive linemen returning and 1,000-yard rusher Cade Garcia back in the mix. It's great to know what those guys can do. I, I know that... Uh, I, have, I, I still have to do some work, but I know that they're going to make a great hole for me, and I know that uh, they, they take a lot of ease off my back, yeah. On defense, the Patriots only returned two starters, but with a class of 27 seniors, the competition for those spots will be heated. There was an lot, awful lot of talent that we graduated last year, and, and uh, we've got to make sure that, that we get people in the right spots here within the next couple of weeks. No surprise here as we take a look at my preseason power rankings, the Century Patriots will once again be the team to beat. At number two, I put last year's runner-up, NDSU commit Barika Penu returns to lead Cheyenne after rushing for a conference leading 1,200 yards and 12 touchdowns last season. You gotta stay hungry, you know. Nothing is going to be given too easy, even after this commitment, you know. But like, it doesn't bug me, it doesn't phase me because I know I work hard, I know I, I got to this part for a reason. So, uh, you know, just having the teammates around me, you know, always pushing me to be the best I can be. And Bismarck at three, the Demons rebounded from an 0-2 start to nearly winning the WDA title in the regular season finale last year. Junior running back Isaiah Hughes should be a force after rushing for over 1,000 yards and double-digit touchdowns as a sophomore. Shanley slides in at number four. Second-year starting QB Cooper Madden returns to lead the EDC's top passing offense from 2019. The Deacon defense steadily improved throughout its first season back in 3A, but they'll definitely miss all-state pick Joe Cava. Davies rounds out my top five. I like what I've seen from dual-threat quarterback Reed Hartness. He put the team on his back in some big moments last year. The Eagles have a new head coach and longtime assistant Wayne Weirmeyer, but I see them putting together another strong season. See a more in-depth 3A breakdown on MidcoSN.com later this week. Just ahead, we spotlight Class 2A. Who are the players to watch? And perhaps more importantly, 
who are the teams to watch after Hillsborough Central Valley graduated a large senior class from that state championship team. Over the course of the last three years, the Hillsborough Central Valley Burroughs are 35-1 with two state championships in two different classes. But at the end of last year, a loaded senior class said farewell. Now, new faces are being called on to step up. Who's next? That's the team motto this fall for Hillsborough Central Valley. A lot of people might think that we don't have a great chance this year, that we lost a lot of guys. I mean, you lose names like, you know, Oscar Benson. He's one of the best players in the whole state last year. And we, uh, we knew that we'd, we got a lot of inexperienced guys, but we got a lot of talent. There's a lot of guys that are going to have new playing time that haven't really had any varsity time. You know, uh, really, you know, it's just about how you overcome adversity. Senior Sam Preston is one of the players stepping into a larger role. He'll get the nod at quarterback, while junior Gavin Mitzel will help lead the running back unit. I like throwing the ball, I like running the ball, I like hitting people, so I'm going to do everything and I'm going to give you the best I got. He's a dual threat. He can, he can throw the ball really far. <laughs> and but we also have our ground game, that's normally what we always play. At the heart of HCV's success has been defense. The Burroughs have had three straight seasons of holding teams to less than seven points per game. Coach O, he's a great coach, he's a defensive minded coach and every week in practice, defense is our, we focus on defense the most. We can, we can do what we want on offense, but we got to stop them on defense. We're as high as we've ever been in terms of participation um, and the quality of, of those kids. is, is going to be a lot of competition in practice for playing time, and that's going to that's going to help in the long run. The schemes coach puts together, you know, we all study up, we all know what's going on, so it's about how we execute. The Burles still have a home in my top five. The Saints are my top team to start, though, thanks to a couple of studs returning and leading rusher Cullen Curl and rock star linebacker Reese Barnhart, who's also a three-time defending state wrestling champ. The Saints are the only team in Class 2A to return multiple first-team All-State selections. The Saints also return most of their offensive line, which is huge. Last year's state runner-up checks in at number two. Despite an injury to starting QB Trey Brandt late in the year last season, the Miners rode their non-traditional offense all the way to the Dome. The good news is Brandt was just a sophomore and should be back to lead that offense. One that also returns All-State rushers Nate Batest and Trapper Skalski. Jim Dooley's team could very well break through for their first state title since 2015. Third on my list is Valley City. The Highlanders have made huge leaps since an 0-9 campaign in 2017. They lost back-to-back -back games to start the season last year, but then rattled off six consecutive victories and played the two best teams in the division really tough at the end of the year. Landon Hansen is a player that I'm really high on. He earned first-team All-State honors as an offensive and defensive lineman, and if you take one look at his huddle tape, you'll quickly see why. We just heard from the defending state champs. I slot them at number four. I know Coach Olson will have that team right back in the mix. For number five, I chose Devil's Lake over Kindred and Central Cass. Todd Lamprecht moves from D coordinator to head coach. The Firebirds, they had a four and five record last year, but it wasn't exactly indicative of how competitive they were. They took Hillsborough Central Valley to overtime, had a close loss to Valley City, and put up 20 points in a nine point playoff loss to Beulah. Ben Heilman earned valuable experience as a starting quarterback as a sophomore and should take a big step forward as a junior. Well, what makes a dynasty? Because I'm pretty sure Langdon Edmore Munich deserves that designation. We'll spotlight the two-time defending champs next. This high school preview show on Midco Sports Network is presented by Nyberg's Ace and Avera Orthopedics. I started the previous segment by telling you that over the last three years, Hillsborough Central Valley is 35-1 and with two state championships. Now I'm here to tell you that there is one team in the state that has somehow been even better. Over the last three years, Langdon Edmore Munich is 36-1 and with two state titles, and the Cardinals have a great chance to three-peat this fall. What could possibly slow them down? We took a trip to Langdon to find out. The only thing that might stop Langdon Edmore Munich from three-peating is if COVID-19 brings the season to a screeching halt. And the Cardinals are doing their part to make sure that doesn't happen. 
just got to go out there and stay safe, do what you're supposed to do, and hopefully we'll play all of our games. We're trying to take every precaution we can to, to make sure that uh, we can keep coming out here every day and uh, you know we get to be out here playing football. These guys get to be with their teammates having fun. Practice might look a little different, but the Cardinals won't be changing much when it comes to the playbook. Offensively, we'll pretty much stay the same that we always have. We, we feel like we have some great skill guys on the outside and uh, you know Grant Rumpfel can be a tough running back for us inside and uh, obviously Simon can run the football too and so we feel like we can run the football and then uh, obviously we can throw the football with anybody in the states. That's the luxury when you have a third year starting quarterback that has passed for over 2,000 yards in back-to-back -back seasons. Simon Rumfo has seen it all and relishes his role in the offense. I wouldn't say I really have like I'm not going to go up there and change the play or anything but there's definitely a lot of reads that I can make depending on how the defense is playing. We have pretty good chemistry, so he knows where to throw the ball and stuff, and I don't know, it's really good. Simon's brother Grant is also a focal point of the offense. He racked up 1,500 yards and scored 30 touchdowns last year, but the two of them are also the top returning tacklers on defense. So it begs the question, which side of the ball do they like playing more? I would say I like, I like putting up the points because I like scoring touchdowns, so. I'd definitely say that I like to put up the points. I'm more of a defensive guy, so I kind of like shutting teams out. I think that's pretty cool. No surprise here, Cardinals at number one, but top to bottom, this division has a ton of talent returning. 16 All-State picks, including 10 first-teamers. Velva is one of those teams that should be in the hunt for a deep postseason run. Quarterback Jersey Selzer and running back Gage Florence are the tandem in the backfield for a third consecutive season. Florence is a two-time All-State selection and one of my top 10 prospects for the 2021 class. They returned the bulk of their roster that advanced to the semifinal last year before bowing out to rival Bishop Ryan. Speaking of the Lions, they check in at number three. Roger Coleman lost some outstanding seniors and guys like Keegan Hengem and Corbin Okeson, but with first-team All-Staters Jackson Feller and Logan Merck returning, this team is built to make another run at the Fargo Dome. From sleeping giant to legit contender, here come the Lisbon Broncos out of Region 1. Prior to last season, the Broncos had won a total of five games in five years. Last year, they won 10 games and reached the state semifinal round for the first time since 2008. Lisbon returns 3,200 yards of rushing from last season between running back Jordan Sowers and QB Hunter Schultz. Those two also help anchor a defense that should be solid. The Tornadoes blow in at number five. Greg Dovitz has six returning starters on offense and seven on defense from an Oaks team that finished eight and two with a playoff win in 2019. Two-time All-State selection Garrett Meal returns to lead the offense at quarterback and anchor the back end of that defense. The Tornadoes' big physical tight end and defensive end Ashton Biesterfeld is back too. My extensive Class A preview blog is posted now on MidcoSN.com. Just ahead, find out where I rank the defending champs of Nine Man. And later, I reveal my top 10 college prospects in the state. This high school preview show on Midco Sports Network is presented by Avera Orthopedics and Nyberg's Ace. Nine Man football had a much different look in 2019 following the departure of several perennial powers. And that opened the door for some fresh faces. The Kidder County Wolves took full advantage, winning their first state championship as a program. This year, the Wolves might have a different look on the sidelines and the field, but that's not changing the expectations. Not much can compete with the feeling of bringing home your school's first state title. Yes, a dream came true. Best feeling of my life so far. But now it's time to get back to work. And these Kidder County Wolves know a thing or two about work. Quarterback and defensive back Jonah Harder spent his summer helping on a ranch. Pushing 900 cows, I mean, that takes a good toll on your body. Classmate Blake Puff kept busy too. I work for a sewer company. Put water lines and level out dirt. It's that blue collar mentality that'll be the driving force behind a team that knows it'll be hunted this fall. We've always said it's not going to be easy this year knowing that people are going to want to hit us hard and they're going to definitely want to beat us. 
The wolves will look different in a few spots, and that starts with the man calling the shots. Longtime assistant Dave Silvernagel takes over for the reigning nine-man coach of the year, Jack Biesterfeld, who decided to hang up the whistle. Me and Coach Biesterfeld, we coached together for a lot of years, and we, the, one of the reasons we mesh so well is we had the same philosophy with it. Uh, we're going to play more physical than you. Uh, by the fourth quarter, we're going to impose our will on you. And that's kind of the philosophy I want our guys to continue with. And it's likely they will. Harder and senior wingback Peyton Cawthon rave about their dominant offensive line and feel they can put up the same numbers they did last year, even after the graduation of their two top rushers and all-state selections, Parker Hager and Isaiah Harder. Yeah, it's going to be some tough shoes to fill, but we got depth with our backs. Losing Parker and Izzy, that's you know a big loss for our team, but... I think we'll be still pretty decent. We got Jacob Beagler back there now. He can put some damage between the line. And defensively, they return seven starters from a unit that finished third in the state in points allowed. We are a run defense. You know, when teams try to run on us, we do a pretty good reading, reading the play and then to you know not let them get yards. They'll need that defense to be at its finest this fall. The Wolves land second on my preseason rankings one spot behind the only team to beat them last year in Region 4 rival Linton HMB, who will actually be co-oping with Strasburg Zealand, an emergency co-op that just became official last week. In fact, I have a trio of teams from Region 4 in my top four. Let's start at the top, though, with the Lions, who return All-State quarterback and defensive back Lucas Schumacher, my preseason player of the year in the division. He passed for 1,100 yards and 15 touchdowns last fall to go with 10 rushing scores. Joining him in the backfield is 1,000-yard rusher Trey Jacob, who's poised for another big season on both sides of the ball. We just heard from the Wolves. They check in at number two. I tabbed last year's runner-up, Cavalier, as my number three team. Sandy Laxdahl will find a way to replenish that roster like he always does. Trevor Hinkle and Brandon Clem are great athletes returning, and so is Demetrius Avila, one of the division's top defensive players. Who gave defending state champ Kidder County his toughest challenge in the playoffs? That would be Grant County Flasher, another team from Region 4. Jamie Krenz's team took a big step forward, going from three wins in 2018 to a seven-win season in 2019. Quarterback Jace Freeze returns for his junior season, and will have the luxury of handing the ball off to All-State pick Connor Otmar. North Prairie rounds out the top five over a long list of honorable mentions. Senior running back and linebacker Xavier Mitchell is one of the top talents in nine man, but they need to find other weapons because you know teams are going to be keying on him this fall. So that's a look at my preseason rankings. A few teams will love them, and I'm guessing a lot more will be using them as motivation. Oh, for many playing on Friday nights, the goal is to play on Saturdays. Just ahead, I'll give you my top 10 prospects that colleges are drooling over. In my opinion, there's nothing better than Friday night lights, but playing on Saturdays in college, well, that ranks right up there too. That's the goal for many of these North Dakota student athletes, and they have some great role models in NFLers like former Century Patriot Carson Wentz, former Shanley Deacon Connor McGovern, and then Brent Qualley, the pride of Williston. So who are some of the players that could be making an impact in the college game from the 2021 class? Here's my top 10 list in alphabetical order. There's a trio of Bison commits, including Mandan's Jackson Dutton Heifer. The 6'4", 255-pound lineman is a two-time All-State selection and a huge disruptor on defense. He also dominates on the O-line and rushed for three scores last season. Velva All-State running back Gage Florence is a dynamic talent that has multiple NSIC offers already. Cade Garcia, who rushed for over 1,000 yards and 19 touchdowns as a junior for state champ Century, well, he's on the radar for a lot of college teams. Davies QB and defensive back Reed Harkness, trying to follow in his predecessor's footsteps. Remember, Jesse Forknell signed with Minnesota State a couple seasons ago, and I think Harkness will have a great chance to play at the next level thanks to his dual threat athleticism, plus he's a pretty good defensive back. Shanley's Emmett Kenny has kicked his way onto the list after becoming a nationally known prospect thanks to his success at the Coles Kicking Camp. He's collected offers from NDSU and USD. Cheyenne's Barika Penu, another future Bison, racked up more than 1,200 rushing yards last season to lead the EDC. The 5'10", 185-pound senior will be fun to watch this year as he tries to get the Mustangs back to the Dakota Bowl. 
Bismarck Century's Andrew Langang is quickly becoming the highest recruited football player in state history. The 6'5", 275-pound lineman has more than 10 offers, including a number of Power 5 schools like Stanford, Kansas State, Arizona State, and Minnesota. I asked him for a scouting report on himself. I know off the football field I'm a nice guy. I enjoy socializing with anyone. I think I can talk to anyone, but once I'm on the football field, it kind of brings out the beast in me, and I, and I know I really enjoy kind of getting after guys, but then at the end of the day, I love competing against all these great players around the state. Competing against the best, that's what it's all about, right? I also included the Rumfo twins from Langdon Edmore Munich. Their resumes speak for themselves. A couple of titles, and they're two of the best all-around athletes in the state. Both have received strong interest from FCS and Division II programs in the region. South's Enoch Sibumana played pretty much every position possible last year. The NDSU commit settled in as one of the top rushers in the state, racking up 775 yards on the ground with nine scores. But the Bison are looking at him to play defense. And he bulked up in the offseason, adding 18 pounds, and he's always looking at ways to improve his game. Personally, I thought I had to get bigger, and I put a few pounds on, but the one thing I'll probably say I had to work on is probably my footwork. My feet were kind of slow at the beginning, but they caught up now. No secret, it's all about getting bigger, faster, and stronger for these guys. I'll have a list of my top players in each class posted on MidcoSN.com this week. That's a wrap for North Dakota. We hope you enjoyed it, and let's get ready to play some football. Our first live game is slated for August 28th as Fargo South visits Shanley on opening night of 3A football. So long, everyone.